Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts, mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Moses Plagues of Egypt see also Santorini. Contact Report 036. Tell me what Moses and Fatima have in connection with Sharan. All we knew so far was that the Giza intelligences were responsible for all these events and that everything was done by Ashtar Sharan or by his command. The case with Moses behaves is somewhat different than was explained because the Ten Commandments, of which there were actually twelve, were not given to him in a spaceship, but actually in that place which is handed down to you in the Bible. In this statement, the truth was handed down to you as it really happened, at least as far as the place of the event is concerned. Contact Report 150 Thereby it is still to be noted by you, as I must explain, that all now following data are calculated according to usual earthly pre- and post emmanuel time reckoning. 1453 B. C. Destroyer Comet gets dangerously close to the Earth and causes severe catastrophes. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, elemental storms, and floods of enormous proportions are the result. Volcanic ash easily eclipses the sun, which lasts for several weeks. The Santorini volcano in the Hellenic Sea explodes, triggering a 180-meter-high tidal wave that rolls across the Mediterranean and far into the Nile country of Egypt, flooding everything. Not only do many human beings die as a result, but also countless animals whose carcasses decompose after the flood rolls back, causing much evil. This event triggers the seven biblical plagues, Moses, Time, and Moses, whereby the waters of the Nile also turn red through the blood of the countless life forms killed and their torn and battered bodies. The flood that rolls back again pushes back across the Mediterranean and forward to the northeast, where it then floods Syria and causes tremendous terror and devastation. Nevertheless, one last question, and indeed concerning the destroyer, Santorini and Moses. My time travels with Ascot have taught me the correctness of the dates and information you have given. But I have recently read in various writings that the time of Moses and the Santorini eruption are calculated in completely different time periods. These calculations and assertions run from the 1500 BC empires back to the 5th millennium BC. Why is that? It is because of the time falsifications of the chroniclers, whereby the Jewish chroniclers and other chroniclers influenced by them committed the worst evils in this respect whereby time falsifications in the transmission of data up to several thousand years became apparent. The Santorini erupted and exploded due to the powerful influence of the destroyer exactly 3,453 years ago, calculated back from 2000, whereby Moses lived at the same time and prepared the exodus for the Hebrew Jewish people in Egypt at that time. These dates are correct as you could see for yourself from your travels with Asket into the past. And Moses really lived and carried out the Exodus, even though it is later once claimed that this is not true. Contact Report 212 This also applies to the fantastic stories that surround Paul, who, in his consciousness confusion, saw himself as a martyr and, thus, also lived and worked accordingly, and following this, he then ultimately died by assassins, as this also happened with Moses, who made many enemies within his own ranks, who then robbed him of his life. Contact Report 213 In addition, the Santorini volcano did the rest, for as a result of its powerful eruption and the 
subsequent explosion, which triggered gigantic tsunamis that devastated the large areas of the Minoan Island when the waters raged across the island. Many buildings and lands were destroyed, while very many people lost their lives. The largest tsunami, however, the huge tidal wave caused by the explosion of the volcano, rolled far across the sea to Egypt, being red with the blood of countless slaughtered aquatic animals, whereby the river Nile then colored itself red, and many people in Egypt died. Contact Report 214 Moses was murdered by Joshua and his accomplices. The reason for this was rather manifold. On the one hand, Joshua wanted to gain control over the Hebrews, which is why he later claimed that in this respect, Moses had determined this through God's command, for it was even God's will. And on the other hand, Moses became hated by many, as well as by the murderous accomplices, not in the least because of the fratricides of the unbelievers of God and of Moses, which were mercilessly committed against all those who were not of Moses' view and who did not believe his words and who contributed to strife through this. Contact Report 401 It has now become apparent that in recent years, Research has been carried out into the plagues in Egypt during the time of Moses, and it has actually come to the attention of researchers that these proven plagues were caused by the eruption and destruction of the volcano Santorini. However, they date the events of that time to a completely wrong time, namely about 200 years before the time that Sim Yayase and Quetzal called. Scientists have found out that the enormous ash cloud of the exploded volcano reached Egypt causing a so-called Fisteria or Fisteria epidemic to break out. Although this is not mentioned in the report of the conversation regarding the ash cloud, and therefore not in the quoted, Sim Yase once mentioned it in a private conversation, as did Quetzal. All aquatic animals and many land animals died, and the water of the Nile turned red because of the blood of the fish, animals and humans, who were affected by rashes all over their bodies. Then there was a huge tsunami caused by the volcanic explosion, which was about 200 meters high, 180 meters to be precise, and which rolled deep into the land, killing a great deal of life once again and also contributing to the epidemics. Contact Report 547 Then a biblical question which refers to the legendary story of Moses respectively about the flight of the ancient Hebrews from Egypt, whereby they are said to have been led by God Jehovah through the desert, by day through a pillar of smoke, and by night through a pillar of fire, which are said to have preceded them. Your father Sfath has already told me that this story of the sign of God is a lie, because in truth the whole escape with the pillar of smoke and fire did not take place in Sinai at a mountain Sinai respectively. Mount Moses, because Moses and the refugees got lost and drifted far south, following the smoke and fire of a volcano in the area of today's Saudi Arabia. That is correct, because the column of smoke and fire was the result of a volcanic eruption that emitted clouds of smoke and fire, which was not in Sinai but much further south in what is now Saudi Arabia. So what is described in the Bible in relation to the appearance of the column of smoke and fire, which is said to have moved before the refugees, does not refer to the Sinai, but to the Halal Beder volcano, which has been dormant since the Middle Ages, in the area of Midian, which today corresponds to the province of Medina, in the northwest of Saudi Arabia. Moses first led the fleeing slaves along the Mediterranean coast to what is now Gaza but then he turned inland and got lost. According to Sfath, Moses led the refugees to what is now the Gulf of Aqaba, and then further south to the Red Sea, then back inland. What my father told you corresponds to what was real. From the territory of present-day Gaza, Moses, because he was unfamiliar with the place and did not know the land, led the slave people astray down to the north end of the Gulf of Aqaba 
then much further south to the then territory of Midian, and to the volcanic mountain Halal el Beder, which was very active at the time. It was only then that Moses realized that he had lost his way with the refugees, so he sought a new way with the slaves, orienting himself to the stars by means of a foreign astronomer and moving northwards, then after a long time reaching the Dead Sea, and from there back to the Mediterranean Sea and the interior of what would later become Palestine and Israel, first to celebrate friendly feasts with the natives, and then, when they were drunk, to murder them and make their land his own. Contact Report 551 Then there is the question I wanted to raise. In the course of time, Simyase, Quetzal, you and I have spoken several times about Santorini, where about 1,453 years ago before Emmanuel, the volcano blew up respectively exploded, and which then also caused the great plagues in Egypt. On the one hand, it was explained that the Nile was discolored by the blood of countless animals, as well as by red algae. But then there was also the fact that so-called dead water was mixed with it, which became red due to lack of oxygen. Where did this red water come from? We call the dead water this way because it no longer contains any life in it due to an absolute lack of oxygen. It can occur in great depths of the sea or in enormously large lakes when the water streams no longer circulate the water to the bottom and no longer supply it with oxygen. The red coloring of the Nile is due to the enormous amount of animal, creatures and human blood as well as red algae, but also to dead water, which was washed out of the depths of the Mediterranean by the gigantic tidal wave after the explosion of the Minoan volcano Thera, as it was called in former times, or Santorini today, into the Nile and into the interior of Egypt. The dead water was washed out of a very deep and extensive volcanic trough by the eruption under the foot of the Santorini in the Mediterranean Sea, carried away by the gigantic tidal wave and driven into Egypt. Contact Report 662 Of course, the old Jews themselves were also partly to blame for the hostility towards the Jews in Christianity and Islam. But again, not the actual Jewish people themselves, but the elders, chief priests, Pharisees, and scribes were the early culprits at the time of Emmanuel. They taught according to the old chronicles which had been rewritten, which had been run into the tricks of Abraham and Moses, and which taught these false chronicles to the people, and from it claimed that they were altogether a chosen people, which then unfortunately was spread by a number of Jews which, however, cannot be blamed on the whole Jewish people in Israel, or even worldwide. The so-called chronicles were truly not such, for truthfully only two or three very meager written records had existed, and on the other hand, they had been burned to the last letter out of carelessness. Then it took more than two hundred years until some scribes for a period of forty days went into the loneliness of the desert, and from memory, after centuries of oral narratives, wrote down individual books as chronicles, which were later put together as Torah Hebrew sound law. From then on, the Torah represented the basic part of the Jewish Bible, which consists of five books. Well, the reason why the hostility towards the Jews could find its beginning already goes back to the times of Abraham and later to Moses, who in their presumptuousness, but allegedly said by God, called the Jewish people the people chosen by God. This emphasized the alleged superiority of Jewish religious culture. Contact Report 665 It is clear that the Greek volcano Santorin, formerly called Thera, was the real reason for everything, but other questions remain unanswered. So it would be interesting to know what caused the three-day eclipse, for example. In addition, I can tell you from our records that the volcano Thera erupted twice in a short time in enormous manner, whereby with the second eruption during hours, a gigantic black ash cloud was hurled up, 
which spread over the whole southern Mediterranean Sea and afterwards also over Egypt and covered during three days the whole Niland into the so-called Egyptian darkness, as this darkness of several days is called since ancient times. After this ash eruption, the Thera volcano collapsed, forming the Santorini ring crater that still exists today. Aha, then the question. What caused the bodily ulcers in the Egyptian population? This happened by sulfur rain, which rained over Egypt as a result of the Thera eruption. This sulfur rain was so corrosive that it burned itself on the skin of humans and animals of all genera and species, causing ulcers and swelling and open and inflamed wounds. But there is also the story that all firstborn human beings are... What you want to ask was the religion of the Egyptians at that time, because the priests lied to the population that their god had ordered them to kill all the firstborn for the blasphemous way of life of the Egyptians as atonement offerings, and the priests and their helpers went from house to house and killed many the firstborn of some families. But it also happened that many fathers and mothers as well as other family members who were addicted to religious delusion, and there were many of them, murdered the firstborn in their families. So this is the next question, which refers to the red water of the Nile and the sea. Was it really only due to the blood of humans, animals, water creatures, dead water, and algae? Not quite. On the one hand, many killed animals and humans as well as algae blooms played a role, but also a gigantic red ash cloud from Thera, which drifted to Egypt and settled on the water and land and thus helped to color the Nile red. This also led to innumerable frogs fleeing to the land and flooding it, but then also dying and decaying in masses. Also, the plants were destroyed by the sulfur rain, whereby also the animals died from it, particularly goats, sheep, cattle, camels, and horses, if they used the sulfur-poisoned grass as food. What attracted insects of all kinds, such as mosquitoes, flies, and other vermin, I suppose? And these critters have also attacked humans and infected them with diseases. This was indeed the case, and many people died from infectious diseases transmitted by vermin, as well as from severe sulfur rain burns. I can well imagine, because I have experienced for myself what it is like when swarms of biting flies, mosquitoes, sand fleas, and other fleas as well as other vermin fall on you and make you sick. Also a locust plague was at that time with the plagues in Egypt which is also terrible, as I know from own experience, whereby I do not want to forget also the rats, which marched over my body in the night, if I wanted to sleep. But if I think even further about the plagues, there were probably also thunderstorms and animal epidemics, right? That is correct, because these plagues also caused epidemics, such as blue tongue in various animals, but also the horse sickness. In addition, at the time of the plagues, there were also two enormous hailstorms, as well as epidemics, in which many animals and also many animals, many amphibians, fish, birds, and reptiles bled to death miserably, died and spread diseases through vermin. Contact Report 758 But I have one question concerning Pinchas ben Eleazar. Who and what was this man? I know nothing about this man. He was a biblical figure, as I have already said, or the grandson of Aaron, who, along with Moses, was one of the central figures during the exodus from Egypt. Of course, his story and Moses' story, as well as the story of the exodus from Egypt, cannot be taken at face value, especially not the fairy tale that the Red Sea parted because of Moses' call for God's help and that the fleeing Hebrew people were able to flee dry-footed through the sea. The whole thing really only corresponds to a biblical fairy tale, for in truth, the Hebrew people fled on a solid strip of land of the marshy area between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea, with Herod's army then drowning in pursuit of the refugees. Contact Report 770 
According to the belief of the theistic God delusional peoples, they are all chosen and commissioned to spread the faith in God in relation to the one single God throughout the earth. For this purpose, he is said to have made a covenant with Abram the African, the father of the early Hebrew people, at a very early time. He then revealed his insane teachings, which he had obviously made up out of his fingers, to the Hebrew people of that time, who recognized the imaginary God and allowed him to lead them over the millennia, before the temple leader Moses came to the fore and seized power, proclaiming himself as leader and claiming that he had also made a covenant with God on Mount Sinai. Contact Report 791 Every society needs its order, and for that it needs rules, because without them everything goes haywire. The Ten Commandments, which Moses devised and introduced, served this purpose, not an alleged or imaginary God the Father. Moses was a human being who saw further and thought, further than the tip of his nose, and knew that humans formed their vison of character from the ground up themselves and then lived their lives accordingly. So he did a great thing when he created the Ten Commandments, which I respected and followed all my life because I knew that they were correct, which is why I can still mention them today, although Moses devised and presented them to the people differently than they are listed in the Bible. In word and truth, unfortunately, what he said was not understood. Consequently, everything was misinterpreted, falsified and written down for a long time, after he was murdered. The truth of the commandments were in fact those, as I can no longer reproduce them in order and word for word, as Moses said. I myself am Lord over myself, and never shall there be a God beside me or above me. Never shall you take your name in vain by lying or by making a fool of yourself. Thou shalt always strive to do what is right and good. Do not lust after the goods of your neighbor. Thou shalt do the duties of thy daily life without grumbling. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt honor thy parents according to their worth. Thou shalt never kill willingly in anger as punishment, blood vengeance, revenge, in greed or war. You shall not steal your neighbor's goods. Thou shalt not break thy bond of companionship. Contact Report 852 And that which Moses fantasized, did, and said, back then, when he was still functioning in the world, which was even more exaggerated and falsified by the scribblers of that time, has remained so until today.